Is it time, y'all? Is it six o'clock somewhere? Is it six o'clock where y'all are? Yep. Hey, Jackie, Chuck, Matt, Buck, Alex, Mark. Hey, Mark. That's a fast guy right there. Fastest guy on this page right now. That's for sure. If you faster than Mark, run. That's a shovel head right there. Ed Hayes, Larry, Larry. Anybody faster than Mark? Let's bring him up. Ed Hayes, 603, fellow lefty. Yes, you are. This is where the clutch is. Left hand, my Harley, my street bike always has the clutch on the left side. And even in my car, even in my El Camino, the clutch is on the left side. I don't know why anybody would want to be right-handed. I wish you would make some flat track exhaust pipes. Well, what does that do? What you race on flat track? Hey, Jim Bob. I mean, you know what's cool about, uh, hey, Steve, when you have a, a track that's, um, if you can turn left, you ain't going fast enough. If you can turn right, you ain't going fast enough. So five in Oklahoma. Wow, that's early. I'm sorry for you guys out there in California and mountain time and stuff that have to watch this thing a little bit uh, earlier than you should, being you got to work for a living, I know. Even people. <laughs> hey, Dave. How are y'all? I got to talk to you about some cool stuff. I wanted to tell you, share with you guys that a lot of folks that have engines, uh, four cylinders, Suzuki's, Kawasaki's, Yamaha's stuff, some of these engines have removable cylinders, whereas a, a, a Suzuki of, you know, uh, what's it, um, the Hayabusa's, most of those have, uh, they're just cast with a chrome plated cylinder and they have a really nice uh, finish on them for the rings to seal up. But the real big ones, we always put iron liners in them. And uh, I'm not a fan of the taking the Harley cylinders and putting alum making aluminum liners and putting a nicosil plating on them. I like the I like the heat transfer that comes from having a, a an iron liner pressed into the aluminum, like we always do on our Suzuki's. This is what it looks like. This is one piece, and this part right here has fins on it so that we can transfer this combustion pressure in here where the, pist where the piston sits in here. And it makes so much heat when it lights off with enough fuel and air in there that we can make, oh, 800,000 PSI in the cylinder and it generates a ton of heat. So this heat gets distributed out of this iron liner and it gets sent over into the cylinder the aluminum casting or the iron cylinders and sometimes some of these engines have fins on them and the fins if you were to take a fin like this right here just drawing some really ugly fins i know y'all can draw better than this but if you took this line right here and you measured this this inch this this inch this inch this inch this inch this inch this this piece of aluminum would be about that long which means tons and tons of area this is why you see uh, radiators have those little cooling fins and all that in there so they increase the area put tons of area in a small space and this right here dissipates a lot of heat especially when you got wind blowing over it. now let me turn this down I had a little too much of Stevie Rava playing in the background trying to jack me up there hey Rusty hey Randy Dustin I just wanted to say thank you all for signing on. Um, but anyway, when you put this cylinder and you put these, you bore out like the like our Milwaukee 8s and you bore this out and you put, like we put bigger cylinders in them, we get all the way over against aluminum here and we get all the way over here and these are bigger liners. And when you do it, A lot of folks don't know this because we don't get to see inside the engines unless you're a tech. And if you're not a tech guy or you're not a real engine guy, you don't know this. But these cylinder sleeves hit each other. So we have to put a notch in the cylinder 
so that the cylinders don't hit each other. So when you put this rear cylinder, okay, this is the front of the motorcycle. When you put this rear cylinder on and you put this front cylinder on, you don't want these two cylinders, these sleeves to hit each other. So the reason they're so long is because the piston travels from here all the way down to here and the skirt looks like this. So it has to have this much. If you have a four inch stroke, that means this piston sits at the top and it goes down four inches. And when it goes down four inches, it hangs out of the bottom of the sleeve. It hangs out back here, hangs out over here, and hangs out over here. So what that does, I don't care if you got a twin cam, a shovel, or a Milwaukee 8. If you've got a V-twin, you've got a chance to have cylinder-to-cylinder -cylinder interference here. And what I wanted to share with you is this piston, as you see, it's, not, it's got a full skirt on this side. And on the back, it's got a notch. Well, this notch is what I was talking about. When this piston goes all the way down, this front one has to come by it like this. So they come by each other, so you got to have these cylinders notched. And if you get a big enough stroke and a big enough bore, think about this for just a minute. The bigger the bore, the bigger the sleeve, the more these are going to run into each other. And then they start hitting way up here, so you got to notch them here and notch them here. And these cylinders, these sleeves are notched a lot. And these pistons hit each other a lot. And the more you cut this away, the more you cut this away, and the more you cut off of that cylinder, that sleeve, the more rock we're going to have. And this rock is a downside because we're getting rid of this area right here. So I'm going to sit down. This area right here is so important to control this piston in the bore, okay? And if you cut that away, I mean, you can see here, almost half of this skirt is gone. So now all we have is some support here and a little bit here and a little bit here. And this is really scary. So what we have learned over time, the Pro Stock motorcycle, the, the 160 engine from S&S with the, think about that thing had 5.125 bore. And there was two of them. And they were so big that they would hit each other when the pistons would go like this. They would hit each other. So the smart thing to do at the end was to find out which skirt wore out the most and what has been found out. Think about this. You Suzuki guys, Kawasaki guys, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, V8 guys, four-cylinder guys, two-cylinder guys, one-cylinder guys. Let's talk about that one-cylinder motorcycle for engine for a minute because listen to me. Your Ford, your Chrysler, your V-twin, your shovel, your Suzuki, your Kawasaki is whatever, how many cylinders you have, they're all one-cylinder engines connected. So let's do a single, like a big 500 single. With a big old crankshaft with this much stroke. Now let me tell you about this. From the center of the crankshaft to the rod pin is half of the stroke because this stroke, when this is going this direction, this goes all the way around, so it also comes over here. So your stroke is now this much. It comes this far this way, comes this far this way, it comes this far this way, it comes this far this way because this rod pin is going around and around in here. And if you've got a four inch stroke, that means your center of your rod pin is two inches from the main. Two inches going all the way around, gives you a two inch radius, so that's a four inch stroke. But let me tell you what's important about that. Is when this piston is in this cylinder and it's going up and down, Now let's say that it's at peak piston speed, which is about 75 to 70 to 80 t uh, degrees after top dead center. I want to tell you what's going on here. This pressure in here, this giant explosion and giant pressure is trying to blow the cylinder head off. You nitro guys will know what I'm talking about. It tries to blow the head gasket out. And it tries to melt the piston. It tries to overheat the rings. And what this is doing right here is this is this piston's going down and this rod's going this way. This piston right now, this big stress, because this is turning, y'all. This, this crankshaft is rotating and this rod is going down. Watch this. This rod is going down and this pressure, this pressure right here 
is trying to shove this piston through the back of this cylinder wall. It would be nice if you thought that it would go, that it's going to shove the piston straight down, but it doesn't. It's, it's, it shoves the piston backwards. So it's trying to slam this piston out the back of the cylinder. This is the major thrust, and this is the minor thrust. So about maybe 80 or 90% of the stress is going on the power stroke, on the power stroke. That's the only time, there's only time there's a 1,000 PSI in the cylinder is on the power stroke. The power and the pressure is trying to shove this piston out the back of the cylinder. So if you have a V-twin that has this notch in the front piston, which I'm sad to tell you there's a ton of them out there. If you buy a new 143 engine, it's got a bigger notch than this on the front piston. So that means every time the piston goes down, this wrist pin and this rod is trying to shove this out the back and there is no area here to withstand that pressure. So you got, if you had 100% pressure on this skirt, you now, in per square inch, you've broken it down in half. So now you got twice as much pressure on each square inch because your square inches are gone. It's like there's a bunch of area gone, so you have to, so it puts a lot more pressure on per square inch of the area that's there. So our answer to that is to make the front piston look like this on both sides. Because the front piston, this side on the front piston, is the major thrust skirt. So on the major thrust side, you need all the skirt you can get to carry that load, that massive load where the wrist pin and the rod's trying to show the piston out the back of the cylinder. There ain't much going on over here, so you won't need a notch, nor will you have a notch. So your front piston should be symmetrical. Or it should at least have more skirt on the back than it does on the front. So your front cylinder has the major thrust on the back. I know I'm gonna say that back to you again. The front cylinder has major thrust on the back of the piston. Now, on the rear cylinder, since this is, we're talking about a single, this is a picture, Robert, Mark, any of you guys that raise Kawasaki's or Suzuki's or Yamaha's or Honda multi-cylinder, four-cylinder, inline fours, this is exactly what every one of your cylinders looks like when it fires and when it's a, uh, 70 to 90 degrees after a top dead center when the piston's really going fast. It's shoving the piston out the back. A couple things make me think about it. I see guys offset bore on the Suzuki's. I remember offset boring the sleeves to the back so that the intake valve would be in the open more. And that's a flow bench generated idea. Somebody with a flow bench said, if I move the cylinder head over this way, 80 thou, my intake valve will be 80 thou further away from the cylinder wall so it will flow more. But what they didn't realize was is they have added to this rod angularity by moving this piston over and increasing this rod angle. So you should endeavor to have your cylinder sleeves at least on center or offset forward a little bit. Even if you lose 10 CFM on the flow bench by moving the cylinder wall closer to the valve. That's just my opinion because what's going on here is way more important than 10 CFM on the flow bench because ain't no flow bench ever won a race. A flow bench will give you some good data, but it will also make you make some bad decisions because it gives you information, and what you do with that information is your fault, not the flow bench's fault or the dyno or the track. So let's put a, let's put a rear cylinder on this engine. Now, we got this piston, and we got this rod coming over here, and we got this big pressure going on over here after this one fires. We got this big pressure going off in here, and this same thing's happening. It's this big pressure is trying to shove this wrist pin into the back of this cylinder. So this is what the rear piston should look like. It should have this notch here so that the front piston can go by. It should have the notch here 
so the front piston can go by and so the rear piston can go back and forth by the front cylinder and the front piston because the major thrust, again, is on the back of the cylinder. Major thrust is here. So you need a full skirt on the back. Almost every engine has the back as full skirt and the minor, the minor thrust is on the front. I know it sounds confusing, y'all, but on the front cylinder, the major thrust of the front cylinder is on the back of the piston, the rear skirt. On the rear cylinder, the major thrust is on the back of the piston, the rear cylinder. So on an engine that rotates this direction, major thrust is here and major thrust is here. Now, the, think about this being a V8. We're looking at it from the front. Here's the harmonic balancer. Here's the passenger si driver's side. Here's the passenger side. And when this is V8 is running and firing, the rear of the front piston, the rear of the pistons on the driver's side is in the lifter valley. And the thrust, major thrust of the passenger side cylinders is on the fender side. So when you see a set of pistons, you want the massive amount of, of uh, structure and strength and stability on the major thrust side. And that is not the same on the pistons because these pistons that go on the passenger side, excuse me, driver's side on your V8 have the major thrust goes on the lifter side. And on the passenger side, the major thrust is on the exhaust pipe side. I know that sounds crazy to some people, but it's a little bit what goes on. Um, so back to the story. Stock engines have little bores. They don't hit it. The cylinders don't hit each other. The pistons don't hit each other. But when you make the bores really big, they hit each other. So when you tell somebody, I want a 143 or a 155 or a 160 to go on the highway and ride up and down the highway, I want it to be reliable, but just understand that you've got a questionable situation going on here. Now this piston is very safe, in my opinion. These have held up really well under high pressure situations because we've got the major skirt is a full skirt. The major thrust skirt is a full skirt. This would go on the front piston. Also, if this was the rear piston, it would go on the, the major thrust would be on the rear of the rear piston and it would be on the rear of the front piston. So beware of that when you get custom pistons or you get these cool engines that got both sleeves notched because they have to be. And then you got the notch on both pistons in the middle. I'm going to tell you all one more thing that I will get some argument on because look, y'all, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. And they're not always popular. You don't call up a piston company and ask them what you want. You call up a piston company and you tell them what you want. You don't call up a valve company and ask them what you want. You tell a valve company what you want. If you don't know, that's the right thing to do. You call up CP, Wiseco, whoever, and you say, I want pistons for my M8. What they'll do is they'll look it up on the computer and see what they sell. They sell what they sell. Now, an engine designer, think about it. Somebody already figured all that out. Like when you buy um, a Screaming Eagle Stage 4 or Stage 5, somebody along the way has figured out all that stuff so that you can buy a kit that will bolt together. And it will be... Okay, it won't be the greatest, but it will be okay. Like I said, I'm not going to bag on a bunch of these companies, but a couple other things. Um, people ask me why I had major uh, thrust and minor thrust and notches and not. So I wanted to go over that for a few minutes and make sure I explain my position on why we do that. Um, the, the other thing I want to tell you is that I see every day guys putting solid compensator brackets on their, on their Milwaukee 8, and I, I understand why. It's because the factory compensator that goes on the crankshaft it's got a real thin cross section and you can speed shift to second and third gear you can go wah, 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 holding the throttle wide open and clutching it to shift wah, 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 wah. and if you do that you can 
you, your clutch is going to slip. So then you buy a lockup or a barnet or some kind of scorpion or something that makes your clutch not slip anymore. And when you do that, now you're going to break something because the clutch is a fuse. You need the clutch to slip a little bit. So if you fix the clutch where it won't slip, then there's a chance that you're going to break some parts. Now back to the compensator deal. The compensator is a two-piece deal that's made to go like this because your crankshaft, when it's running, when it's in the bike running, crankshaft is going clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise so fast. And think about it too, the piston's sitting dead still at top dead center, it sits dead still at the bottom, it's sitting dead still at the top, sitting dead still at the bottom, and the crankshaft's going like this. It's trying to come out of the engine, so a V-twin has to have a compensator to take up this slack, because it's going clack, 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 and it has springs in it to where if you really load it, it can jump over a tooth and jump over a tooth, but you want it under normal conditions to have room to move. If you put a solid compensator on the front or a compensator eliminator, you have taken all that away. And if you have to put a compensator eliminator on, on there, please use the stock gear ratio size. People say if you put a smaller one on the front and a bigger uh, chain tensioner or you put a bigger clutch gear on or whatever you're doing to take up the slack if you put a smaller compensator sprocket on the front they say it gives you more acceleration it does not it changes the gearing overall same thing you do if you change the rear pulley the front pulley or the sprockets on the chain in the back but it if you change the rear pulley or the rear chain sprockets you don't change the clutch to engine relationship that's what's important. The stock size on the crank and the stock size on the clutch basket is very important because it gives you a 1.36 ratio, which puts a lot of power into this clutch which was designed to handle it. If you take teeth off of the front sprocket, you're increasing tons of load into this clutch. And now your clutch wasn't slipping that bad. Now it's slipping really bad as soon as you go down teeth on the front. And if you go down teeth on the front, the, now your clutch is slipping. Now you've got to put in some kind of really big clutch plate, some kind of heavy spring, some kind of lockup to fix the problem you created by going to the small gear here. If you do that, now you're gonna break something for real because you've taken your fuse out of the picture, which is your clutch, you want your clutch. I tell people that the tire is supposed to wear out and be changed. The clutch plates are supposed to wear out and then be changed. And then the, the compensator is supposed to wear out and then be changed. They're not supposed to last forever. And if you fix one thing to where it lasts forever, something else is going to last half as long. So I am thankful for you guys to come and watch again. I know I got a kind of a crazy deal going here, but thank you all again for watching Tech Talk number 78. Tech Talk number 78 is in the books. I appreciate you guys checking in with me. I, will, I enjoy doing this with you all. Um, send me